Now Nietzsche, the German incel, said that if we do not take a look at the things that we care about, the things that we value in our world, we would end up living in a death cult which would destroy the entire project of Western civilization and drive us into the ground and make us devolve into something ugly and botched until all that's left is a culture of people who look like Gollum. Now Nietzsche's hope is that we in the West would still have the spiritual creativity to overcome this danger, to find a way of looking at the world that was able to embrace life and all its struggle and all its pain because we saw the greatness of beauty, the greatness of success, the greatness of high culture as worth the struggle. And he said what would be required to achieve this would be a re-evaluation of all of our values. Everything that we care about, everything we hold up as a god, would need to be criticized and reorientated so that it actually leads to the success which is necessary. Now, have we succeeded in doing this? Well, of course, Reddit Nietzscheans will tell you yes. We have overcome the ignorance of the traditional conservative Christians of the past, and now we live in this free, individualistic Reddit society. But of course, this is a lie. This is a mistake, a misunderstanding of what Nietzsche was trying to say, because Reddit hegemony of our value system that you see in our world today is just as life-denying and dangerous and bad as anything that they accuse Christianity of possessing. And it comes down to a way that Nietzsche was trying to judge the world. You see, a lot of Reddit Nietzscheans will tell you that Nietzsche was a relativist, a moral relativist, even a nihilist. Of course, none of this stuff is true. They will tell you that he saw everything from different perspectives and believed that there was no way you could judge reality and all these type of things. But this is all mistakes. This is all coming from people who read the Wikipedia articles to talk about Nietzsche instead of his actual books. Because Nietzsche is constantly very clear that he distinctly values life. He believes in life. He believes in the things that come along with life. As I've mentioned before, beauty, strength, majesty, power, the ascending powers of life that reach up towards the great things in the world. These are all fundamentally, unarguably good. Now, the thing is, is that in order for us to achieve these beautiful things, such as success, all these types of things. We have to engage with life, but the problem with life is that it's savage and brutal. Now, to give you an analogy for this, think about how the jungle works. The lion is beautiful. The lion is majestic. We all drive down to Africa in safari so we can take a picture of them. We love lions. But how did the lion become beautiful? Did he sit around talking about compassion all day and empathy like a Redditor? Did he go and pray in a church like a Christian? No, the lion went and cruelly murdered a gazelle. He choked the gazelle out until it died, and then he began to eat its organs, claiming from the gazelle its actual body, digesting it and turning it into power that made him more beautiful, that made his skin grow, that raised his testosterone, that made him more handsome and more powerful so he could do it again. And life did not punish him for this. No god came down and spanked him on the ass and said, leave my gazelle alone. That did not happen. Instead, the gazelle suffered incredibly as the lion ate his body. And the lion was not punished for this. The lion was rewarded with more power. And alongside that power came good health and came happiness. All these things that people want. Now, this is how reality works. This is the laws of nature that God built into the game. And this is very difficult for us to confront, but it points a problem in our faces. If you want to achieve beauty, happiness, majesty, if you want to become as glorious and magnificent as the lion, if you want to have a place in the world, if you want to exist, you need to understand that suffering is going to come as a consequence of this. The world has laws that you must obey and you can't rationalize your way out of them. But you and I both know that suffering sucks. It's not nice to be in pain. It's not nice to break your arm. It's not nice to get sick. It's not nice for somebody to hurt you. It's not nice to lose. None of these things feel good at all. And sometimes when we're hit by an awful lot of sickness, or maybe we're born with a genetic problem, or maybe we're weak and frail, or maybe somebody defeats us, we'll often find ourselves on the floor, wrapped up in the fetal position, depressed, and we'll cry out to ourselves, why, God, have you made the world like this? This can't be how things work. I can't deal with this. This world is too hard. 
Why have you cursed me with suffering? In fact, you may even begin to wish in this state of pain that the world worked a different way. You might say something like, I wish people weren't taking advantage of me. I wish lions weren't so evil. I wish they left gazelles like me alone. Now, you may take this wish even further. You may start to think that there's something wrong with the world. You may ask yourself, why am I suffering? And you will give yourself a story. You'll say that you are being challenged by God, by reality. That this world is not necessarily the real world. This world is a lobby, a waiting place, a testing ground for you to enter into heaven. Because in heaven or in this other world or this future world, the Reddit utopia perhaps in your mind, this will have a different set of values. This will be built in a different way. It will have a different law. It won't have this law of the lion. The lions won't be handsome. The lions won't be even exist. The lions will be your slaves in this Reddit utopia. Instead, Reddit utopia will operate in a whole different way of seeing the world, a whole different set of values. And in fact, what God wants us to do is to experience the suffering in this world and realize that it is wrong and realize that we must go to Reddit utopia. We must fix nature and bring ourselves to Reddit utopia in response to this suffering. And if we, if we build Reddit utopia on your earth and reestablish a new set of laws, then God will be happy. Then God will pat us on the head and, and save us for everlasting life. Now, what Nietzsche says that you have done here is very psychologically fascinating and incredibly psychologically dangerous because in response to suffering, you have looked at life you've realized that life is a part of your suffering. To live is to suffer. Life is hard. But instead of you being able to embrace life and say, you know what? The suffering's part of the game. I'm going to overcome it and I'm going to fight and I'm going to win. And even if I lose, I'm going to continue to fight till the very, very end so I can become like the lion, so I can manifest some type of grace and some type of strength. And even the gazelle thinks like this. Up until the very end, the gazelle always fights because that's how nature's spirit is. But you did something different. You didn't want to play that game anymore. You started to complain about nature and complain about the game and complain about it, how it works. And you started to create a new way of seeing things. You denied life. You formulated a way of seeing the world that was against life. Nietzsche calls this life denial. He says when your soul is weary and it cannot handle suffering, it can't, it doesn't have the fight in it to keep going. It loses the vitality to keep fighting despite the pain. You start to develop this wishful thinking. You start to get pissed off with life. You start to say, I don't want to participate in life anymore. It hurts. I can't handle the hurting anymore. I want to escape. And this psychological disposition becomes the foundation for a reevaluation of values in the negative sense. You start to care about and celebrate things that you wish you had in this world of nature, this horrible samsara. You start to celebrate freedom. You start to talk about equality. You wish that the gazelles and the lions had justice between them. You start to celebrate all sorts of interesting things that violate the way the game works. Now, this sounds beautiful to you initially. Because, of course, it's coming from that state of struggling with suffering. And so you're wishing for a more ideal, a better world, a more romantic world. Of course, we understand it. But you don't realize how dangerous this is. You don't understand how bad it is to lie. For a variety of reasons. The simplest one of all is that you're lying to yourself. You know, if you want to suffer less, you must become stronger. This is even now understood with modern science, that the stronger your muscular system is, the more resistant you are to pain. If you have an injury, if you can rebuild the structures around the injury, your pain levels will go down because strength is inversely related to pain. Strength is how you cure pain. But how can you become strong if instead of going and competing in the world, you spend all your time complaining about the world on Reddit? You're complaining about equality and justice and all these things. You're hoping for a different reality is actually hurting you more because you're putting off the one thing that will make you stronger and make you suffer less. Now, the second and even more pernicious result of this way of thinking is that you begin to support these values 
of justice and equality in your community. You begin to say it to everyone around you. You begin to install this way of thinking inside your friends. And what happens then? They start to get obsessed with escaping. They start to turn away from things that will make them strong because these things that will make them strong cause suffering or are evil or are fascist or hierarchical or something like this. You start to move them away from bodybuilding, lifting, mental strength, assertiveness, competition. You start to pull them away from these more virtuous things, these things aligned with the challenges of nature. And you start to entrance them in this cult of weakness, this cult of escapism, this cult of romanticism. And so you all become weak together. And then through your inability to confront suffering and your need to spread your ideas to everybody around you, let's all change the world together. You actually pull everybody down into more pain, make their lives harder and fundamentally spin downwards into a vortex of uselessness until you all either die or fail. This is why Nietzsche criticized this way of thinking so heavily. This is why he hated life denial so much. Because through a cascade of bad decisions, you can go from confronting suffering, struggling to being able to embrace it, denying it, denying life as a consequence, coming up with some theory cell reddit idea of how the world should be, becoming weaker yourself, continuing to spread the Reddit idea because you're a dork, spreading it to all your friends, persuading and bewitching everybody around you that they should follow along with Reddit Utopia too. All of you become weak together, your suffering enhances more, and then basically your health implodes and you all spiral into a death cult. You spiral downwards into a life-denying, pointless existence that causes more pain, gets nowhere, and leads to people finally escaping into death suicide, pain, whatever it is. Now you might say to yourself, Steph, whoa, chill out, man. That never happens. That's just some crazy German incel who lived on a mountain who thinks he knew what was going on because he had a big mustache and all this. But this is the culture that we live in. Western culture is a life denying death cult. This is the substance of where we are. And if you don't believe me, just look around. What is the story that we are being told in the West? What is the culture that we live in? What makes up our decisions and actions on a day-to-day -day basis? What are the values that we are operating with in the world? Western culture is a danger to you before you were even born. Your mother and your father will probably be told to sterilize themselves, to get a vasectomy, to not have children at all, because children are evil. Children being brought into this world of suffering is too cruel on the child, so they should not be born. They don't need to have existence because existence is pain and it is evil to put a child through that. Or children are a bane in the environment. There are too many people. The human species itself is too full. There's too many of us Westerners. We must uh, cut down our numbers and cull ourselves off. We must die for the sake of the environment. It wouldn't be a bad thing if we went extinct really at all, because all we do is exploit and take from this world. And say by miraculous accident you are conceived, you are growing inside your mother's womb, your mother is told to abort you, to get rid of you as soon as possible. A child is too much work, too much effort. A child is suffering, it takes away from your pleasure, it takes away from all these things. Instead, you should, you know, get rid of that thing, you know, it's a, it's a contribution towards the environmental problems and all these types of things. It brings more suffering into the world in some way. And then say you are born, it's not like you're out of the woods yet. You escape the womb, only to be told that life is incorrect fundamentally about you. Nature gets things wrong all the time and you're born into the wrong body. Your genitalia there are not right. This whole idea that nature could get something right, it's silly. Instead, we must correct nature. You might be castrated in your youth, filled with hormones or something like this. But say against all odds, you make it to adulthood unscathed, with none of these problems after haggarding on you, everything's intact, you're all good. You're still given a vision for life that is against nature, that is against what you are, because you are nature, you are life. You're made of biological material, and you're told that you must deny that. If you're a woman, you were told that you cannot embrace your femininity. You must go on a path of getting a career, and you end up sterile in your 30s. If you were a man, you were told you can't express your masculinity. That is toxic. That is a source of evil. That's a source of suffering. You must instead become a new male, become an emasculated boy who doesn't really 
have enough testosterone to produce children. You both meet in your 40s and then you form this like useless marriage that doesn't really have any point to it or this relationship or whatever it is. And you live a life of sterility, aimlessness, purposelessness. And all you can fill it up with is entertainment, Reddit and weird food. And if you're in any way intelligent, sensitive or creative, you would wake up to this scam, to this ruckus, to this demoralizing anti-life existence that is offered for you. And you say, I can't bear with this. There must be something higher. I can't sit around in this meaningless existence of bread, circuses and Reddit. There must be something more. And so you go to your culture, you go to your art, you go to theater, you go to drama, and you discover that you don't have a culture. You were told as a Western person that your culture is evil, your history is evil. You fundamentally are the source of all problems and all pain in the world. You are the source of suffering. And the only cultural project that you can engage in is not some brave, heroic journey into space or the creation of new, profound architectural projects or this great art that we can produce that's going to lift up the soul of all of mankind. Instead, you were told that what we're going to use all this technology for is equalizing everything because equality ends suffering. We're going to transform everything using these buzzwords of diversity or equity or whatever it is. We're going to take theater and take all this incredible power we have to create these great artistic projects. And we're going to focus on doing equal representation in this because all of these are justice for the past. These are redeeming the suffering of the past. And of course, that's the beautiful word that is being said. But in truth, what it's really doing is spreading this infection, this life denying infection via guilt onto you. It's making you hate yourself. It's making you not believe in the creative potential inside of your soul. It's not allowing you to create art or create culture or create civilization because you are evil. Your creativity is the worst thing. You cannot create children and you cannot create culture. You must be sterilized in all ways possible. And as a consequence of this, you cannot be inspired. You cannot be motivated. The only emotion you can feel is this horrible, weary, nihilistic guilt. No, you cannot believe, you cannot create. You cannot believe that you deserve a future. You cannot believe that you deserve to manifest your inner world. The most fundamental thing in life is confidence, is believing that you deserve to exist. That's what the gazelle must believe in order to fight. That's what the lion must believe. But instead, this is demoralized out of you. You don't believe. You are shackled with guilt until it depresses you. The values that float around in your culture sterilize you so completely, leave you so depressed that you give up. Did you say to yourself, I can't do this anymore? So you retreat into escapism. You find alcohol, there's plenty of that around. Maybe you get into entertainment, maybe you go on Reddit. Or you can just skip all that. You can go straight to the money note. You can go to Canada and you could sign up for euthanasia and end the whole project altogether. Now, when you develop eyes for this, you begin to realize just how horrible and wretched it is to put somebody through this. Yes, it might sound beautiful to talk about equality and diversity and this whole idea that we have of Reddit consciousness, the Reddit utopia, but this is what people experience. Their life is of meaninglessness and pain and suffering and struggle. Their life is bad in every metric. There is no beauty. There is no hope. There's no creativity. There's no fertility. It's a destruction of life at its very, very essence. Yet at the same time, people accuse Nietzsche of being evil. They will say that Nietzsche is trying to get you to turn into his, this might is right, nasty man. Nietzsche is trying to tell you to grow claw, claws like a lion and go out and grab old people when they're struggling to get across the traffic lights and eat them on the street or something like that. Nietzsche is telling you to go out there and kick poor people in the face so you can mug them, so you can say to them, you're, you're untermenches and all this. But of course, Nietzsche is not saying that. Nietzsche is pointing out that this is a very serious problem. He's pointing out that the next Achilles, the next Julius Caesar, the next Mozart, the next Beethoven is not going to achieve his great destiny because he will be put through this and he will struggle to even survive this. He's going to be put through this and he's probably going to end up confused about his gender, maybe cutting his own dick off and then end up getting euthanasia in his mid-twenties or something like this. This is what Nietzsche is pointing at. How are we going to have great people if we have this weight of tyranny pulling everybody down? Great people don't just 
pop up like random children coming out of cabbage patches or something like this. Great people are rare, exceptional, precious things that need to be cultivated. This is what you need to do. You need to have a ground, a soil that is fertile so that a great plant can grow out of them. Ours is not. Our soil is barren. Our culture is sterile. Our culture is poisonous. Any potential we have is getting squashed by the culture that we've allowed to build around ourselves. And the great poison that is existing in our culture is this lying life denial value system that we've installed in there. Reddit consciousness is destroying Western culture. You see, Nietzsche is saying that you are the problem. Your big morality, your beautiful idea is anti-life, is at war with life fundamentally, and you're the cause of so much suffering and pain in this world. And instead, what people need is the opposite of what you're offering, the opposite of these treasured values that you are willing to destroy people's lives to defend. Instead, what we need is to believe in life, to believe in the nobility and intelligence of our passions, to the natural law that is built inside of our instincts. We need to believe in ourselves, you must have the heroic courage to believe that you can overcome suffering and pain. You must have standards. You must want to raise hierarchies out of the ground and reach towards the highest heavens. You see, you and I, our great task is that we have to overcome this nihilistic death cult, this Reddit value system that is crushing out the potential out of all of life and instead build a world, build a culture that can allow a young boy to grow up and see the possibility that he could participate in something excellent, that he could even become a hero, that he could go and chase after great aims and great projects. Instead of having his nose shoved into the ground with all this petty nonsense, this downward going whining. Instead, he can look towards a great future, join great teams that are going on great projects, inspiring him to bring out the best in himself, to compete and participate in the great game of life.